In this video we're going to be looking at thirds, simplifying thirds and using conjugates. Now a third is a number like the square root of 3 which is only written as square root of 3 if you write it as a decimal you can be close but not entirely accurate. Square root of 4 can be written as 2 so you wouldn't need to write it as a third in that case. Third form just means writing it with the square root for example the square root of 48. Once again you could write that as a decimal just less than 7 but not accurate unless you write it in the brackets. Right, simplifying thirds is taking the square root of 16 and trying to write it as something a bit more compact. Uh, the square root of 16 can be written as the square root of 16 is 4 times 4, which is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 4. We'll prove that this bit can happen. 2 times 2, and that's equal to 4. The square root of 16 is in fact 4. This means that you can take the number under the square root and split it up into its, into its factors. You can also take the two factors and completely split the square root in half as we've seen from that example. Now if we take the square root of 48 as an example and want to simplify this third, uh, we can look for the square root of 48 to be square root of 2 times 24. 48 is 3 times 16 and 4 times 12 and 6 times 8. Now we're also going to want to look for numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, because these can be written as, if you look for the square root of 4, 9, 16, 25, that's just the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are the perfect squares. If you find a perfect square, it can be simplified down into a whole number without your square root sign. Right, so I'm going to look for these. Here's one of them, 16 and 4. So I'm going to try and simplify these two versions of the square root of 48. The square root of 3 times the square root of 16 is square root of 3 times root 16 is 4. So the simplified version of root 48 is 4 times root 3. I'm going to do the same thing again with this other version. Root 4 times root 12 equals 2 times root 12. But 12 isn't a prime number like 3 was, so you can probably keep going. So let's do that. That's going to be 2 times root 4 times 3. 12 is 4 times 3. And there we've got another another 4, another perfect square. So that can be written as 2 times root 4 times root 3, which is 2 times 2 times root 3. 4 times root 3, the same thing we got when we did the first time. So all this means is what you're best to do is look for the biggest perfect square that you can find as a factor of your original number. So the biggest perfect square number as a factor of 48 was 16. You don't have to, but it makes it faster and easier to get to the same answer. So for example, if I wanted to simplify this expression here, root 18 plus root 32 minus root 50, I can break down each of these individual thirds into these two parts, and I've got a common root two as a factor of each of those. So I'll just write this out, root 9 is 3, root 16 is 4, and negative root 25 is 5. And I'll just factor out the common factor, which is root 2, and put that outside the bracket here. So we've got 3 plus 4 minus 5 is 2, times root 2, leaves you with this, which is the simplified third version of what we started with. Right, now a quick look at something called conjugates. A conjugate uh, is in reference to an original term such as a plus b. The conjugate looks very similar except it's going to have a different sign in the middle. So a plus b will go to a minus b and that's the conjugate of a plus b. The reason we want a conjugate is best seen by multiplying the two together to see how it helps you simplify. a plus b times its conjugate a minus b gives you this expression here where the two mixed terms cancel off. So we're only left with a and b terms, not an a times b term. So no mixed terms. Mostly we're going to be using complex conjugates, although not in this video, but here's an example of a complex conjugate anyway. A complex conjugate of a plus bi, where b is the imaginary part of the complex number, just means you change the sign of the imaginary part. So the bi goes to negative bi. 
useful because if we then multiply the number, the complex number, with its complex conjugate, we get this expression and negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is i, so i squared is negative 1. What this does is it gets rid of all your the a plus b i terms and the i squared all goes away we're left with only real numbers so we've made a complex number into a real number using that method so here's an example using surds and this is probably the main point of this video if i've got a surd 1 minus 2 i so that surd expression the complex uh, not the complex the conjugate is 1 plus root 2 so if I have a, an expression as a fraction like this that I want to simplify, the first thing you must do is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. Uh, not, not the complex conjugate, just the conjugate. It's not a complex number of the denominator. So the denominator is 1 minus two, uh, root 2. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus root 2. Okay, so I'll, I'll just write this out in full and kind of slowly so you can see it once done at this speed. You don't need to do it like this. You could do everything all at once, but just for explanation purposes, here I am multiplying the top and the bottom by 1 plus root 2, the conjugate of the denominator. 1 plus root 2 divided by 1 plus root 2 is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And if you multiply an expression by 1, You've not done anything to the expression. It'll look different, but it'll have the same value. So I'm going to expand the, the numerator first. So here it is, all written as one fraction, but we won't bother expanding the denominator just yet, although that's the main point. So just using your, your method for quadratic factorization, 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times root 2 is 12 root 2, minus 2, root 2 minus 2 root 2 squared and we'll do the denominator later so uh, first things first root 2 squared is just 2 because the the root and the square are opposites so that's 12 minus 4 and your third terms is 12 root 2 minus 2 root 2 this all factor uh, this all simplifies down to 8 plus 10 root 2 12 root 2 minus 2 root 2. I'll do the same thing with the denominator now. 1 plus root 2 minus root 2 minus root 2 squared. Right, now these two, the root 2 and the minus root 2 cancel off, leaves us with 1 minus 2. So that will all be 8 plus 10 root 2 over negative 1, which we can write as negative 8 minus 10 root 2. What was the point of all this? Well, as you can see, by multiplying the top and the bottom by the complex uh, by the conjugate, we've made the denominator into just a whole number. There's no thirds anymore. So it means we can simplify it right down and you don't even have a fraction anymore.